I, um, a couple other little things have changed that I have noticed. People don't print anymore. Right. Right. It's it depends. All... It depends. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll give you that it depends, and not male diapers. Uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I'm a highbrow philosophical discussion, and then down, and then back this up. This is not going to help you pick up girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how are y'all doing? I'm Aunt Pruitt. Hope y'all are doing well this fine Thursday evening. Uh, this is the Hangout on Air with the Google Plus Smartphone Photographers Community. We like to call it Point and Shoot. We don't call it a podcast. We call it a hangout on there. It's a podcast. Right? It is not. <laughs> it's a hangcast. <laughs> well, if you would fix your RSS feed, then it could be a podcast. Yeah, yeah, I ain't doing that either. <laughs> We're just gonna buy you this is not a podcast dot com. Yeah, that 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 might yeah, that might that work. That might work. That might work. Anyway, it's good to see all of these fine folks in here hanging out with me tonight. Uh, this this particular week, our hangout on there is going to be a little bit different. We are not going to discuss our photography challenge because it was set up as a two week challenge. So um, we'll just get into that stuff next week. But tonight, we will just discuss a few things that were on our brain and get up out of here. We're not going to hold you guys up um, long tonight. You know, maybe thirty minutes or so. But we'll just see how it goes. But uh, let me allow these folks that join me t- tonight to introduce themselves. We'll start with the lovely lady, Miss Annette Holland. How you Hi. be? Hi. Tired. Um, I think my bags might be yours. Um, I don't know, man. I, damn. I, you know, I, normally I'm pretty pretty much in love with me some me. But I just looked <laughs> on the camera and I'm like, damn, dude, you look rough, man. Jeez. So, no. You, no, you, you're just. No, fine. I've got the raccoon bingo now. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I I am glad to be out of Houston, so I'm not drowning. Uh, and it was actually a nice day here in Boston, over Boston. seventy. Boston, Boston, got to Boston. Got go for a game and wear my Dodger stuff, even though it was a Red Sox game. So. Oh wow! Wow, I love you're you. You're brave even more for that. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky you didn't get whacked. Man, I love you even more for that. You are a badass. That's what's up in that. You tell LA it. all day. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you tonight. Next up, we'll head on down to the flooded state of Texas. Mr. Michael King, what's happening, my man? Well, I got bags will beat yours because I've only had in the last since Sunday night. I've only had about five hours of sleep because we've been, as I said, we have been, uh, we're now the undercity water of Houston. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm going to uh, evacuation, right? Yeah. Uh, we had we had to evacuate out of my apartment. It, the water stopped 10 buildings down. But all of, about 90% of Jersey Village was underwater. Um, where my mother lives, they just got it the day after uh, yesterday. Cypress Creek finally went out, and it got the back of the subdivision. It got it, it, it uh, hit a um, a um, retirement center. And they had to evacuate all these uh, people that were in wheelchairs and stuff like that. So it's been not good. So it's well, been it's good to see you there from your humble abode in Houston. You know, yes. you're not floating right now or sitting on a raft while you're trying to do this hangout yeah. on there. Well, so it's water, good to see you. The water has pretty much receded. White Oak is what flooded us, and it's it's way down. It's below its banks. Uh, most of them, except for Cypress Creek, Spring Creek, and uh, none Buffalo that, Bayou. None of that means anything to me, bro. Uh, I think I think somebody <laughs> someone knows what I'm talking about. Buffalo area. I mean, you, I I just know you're down there. It's really really wet, and fortunately, yeah. you're dry right now. Yes, it's good to see you, my man. And no rain the forecast until Sunday, and there's a little lot of it. And then Thursday we got another chance of heavy rain. Jeez, hang in there, man. <laughs> All right, let's move up to New England again, my man, Mr. Joey Kelly. How you doing, brother? Yes, good evening. I am the artist formerly known as Michael Knight. 
Jeez. Oh, uh, nice try. No, no, no. <laughs> nice try. Not Wait. today. Not today. Not today. <laughs> Too soon. Doing, man? Uh, I'm yeah. doing all right. It's it has been a a very good day up here despite um tragedies and whatnot going on around the world, um, and some in my own little personal life. I got to be the undertaker of a computer today. So, oh well. Mm. May yeah. it rest in paradise. Or something. Or or in yeah. pieces. One or the other. Mm. Well, my condolences to you, my friend, and as always, it's good to see you coming in from the wonderful state of Maine. I prefer to think of it as the greatest state in the Union. Okay, that'll work. California. I'll give you that. He's at the Union. <laughs> All right, so let's get into our little discussion for tonight. <laughs> California, not Texas. Yeah. I was going to say, not the country of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> now, last week when we got together, you know, we talked about the challenge and a few other things. Um, but I touched on... What 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 exactly is the value of photography for for people in general today? You know, I, I asked you folks that were hanging out. It was Mr. Kelly and Mr. King hanging out with us last week. Uh, Miss Annette, you weren't available at the time, but I wanted to to bring that up again and and just just you know just sort of get your thoughts. I shared our discussion last week with um, followers and subscribers and whatnot just to get some of their feedback and. It was interesting to see what people think uh, that are not necessarily curious about touting their phones around and trying to get the best composition and the best shots or what have you, you know. But it's, it's it was always interesting to see the different takes. But Mr. Kelly, you said you wanted to share something that you had on your brain. Should I be scared? Well, you should always be scared anytime I start talking about things that are on my brain, because. Um, <laughs> Sometimes this thing gets so hot, I'm going to wonder if I'm going to look like you one day. The, you know, no hair and, I don't know, something yeah. might, weird might which happen. Is, which is not a bad thing. You well. Read, here's Anthony. Oh. No, they, they start to think in their head smoke. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> if I'm frying eggs on my own noggin, we got a problem. This is true. Uh, but, um, no, I, I got, I actually got watching your edited version that you posted on AntPruitt.com. Um, and, and it jogged my memory uh, on a couple of things. You were talking last week about how you just seem – your personal view on the subject was that you seem to be seeing by volume more egotistical, self-centered, um, shall we say, non-artistic. Yeah, it's um, more narcissistic, and it's more of a right now kind of thing. There's, it doesn't – really seem to be yeah. something that's timeless, to right. it, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. It, it, and, and you're not wrong. That's the thing, is that you're not wrong. But what has happened in the culture, I think, is not that all of a sudden this has exploded and that there's all of these people taking these meaningless pictures that are only about right now, the difference is, is that you're seeing them faster, and you're right. seeing them in more multiples, and you're seeing them in more forms. Boy, you got that right. You yeah, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's a decline in the serious photographers. I think it's an upswing in the people that aren't serious photographers, which changes the the percentage and the balance point of serious artistic photography and lowers it down on the slide. So, mm. And I think that the people that are in this group, regardless of what they're shooting with, smartphones or not, are going to take their photography more seriously uh, than, than other people. And while yeah, I'm on... And I get that. I get yeah, that. Yeah. And, and while I'm on that topic, just a second Mike, before you jump in, I, um, a couple other little things have changed that I have noticed. People don't print anymore. Right. Right. It's it depends. All... It depends. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'll give you that it depends, and not male diapers. Uh, it. <laughs> See, I, I, I'm a highbrow philosophical discussion, and then down, and then back this up. This is not going to help you pick up girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna help you get rid of them. Oh man, I got my sound bite for the week. 
<laughs> Did I do that as a quote of note for tonight? I've got my tablet right here. Yeah, I'm just going to have Aunt send me the recording of that. I'll set that as my ringtone for every text message <laughs> that pops in. And I'll be like, this is not going to help you pick up girls. <laughs> I'm like, yep, yeah, well, that's just, yeah. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> um, now, I'm, now I've lost track. Um, that's not hard to do. Printing. Printing. Yeah, no kidding. Printing. 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 Right. Yes, it uh, depends. Well, I think it does depend uh, an awful lot on what your goals are. But by volume, printing is off incredibly because, right. you know, when you shot a 24 or 36 exposure roll of film 25 years ago, you had to print all of it. Yeah. There was no choice. You didn't get your pictures done until you got them developed, and if it was print film, printed. That yeah. was your only option. So mm -hmm. now that people have the option of printing or not printing, they're choosing not to print. And I think that also contributes to the volume of relatively crappy shots that you see posted because people aren't taking the time. Uh, the other thing... Uh, well, investment. So, right, they're not taking the investment. Now, that actually was personified for me personally on a photo shoot not too long ago. We were setting up for a night shoot... Um, which is something that I do a lot of, not with a smartphone, but DSLR, because you have to have it for time exposures. Of course. Uh, and what? although I, I am hoping for an app that will take care of that, but hey, anyway. Um, the a, a person off to my right was shooting a fixed 50 millimeter lens, 35 millimeter camera, uh, slide black and white T-Max film on an all-manual camera. Wow. And I went, oh, boy. I just mean, the, I'm like, just to frame that shot is an investment on that on that equipment. Yeah. Just to frame and, it. And she made a very, mm, I'll say it, abrasive comment as to the quality of, of my photos by, without even having looked at them, by by just the fact of the amount of effort that I put into them, okay. or at least supposed effort that I put into them. And okay. although it was an abrasive comment, the more I have thought about it after the fact, she has a point. You know, I shot that one day uh, two, three hundred f images. Yeah. Of which I probably pulled a dozen that I was truly happy with. Okay, Joey, but you 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 you're leaving something out. Mm. The abrasive comment. Oh well, the abrasive comment was basically that um, I don't remember exactly how she phrased it, but she basically said, you know, I have to make I have to work to make my photos look good. Right. Right. So and I'm like, about yeah, and I'm well, going... But well, she's got a different sense because of the equipment that she was using at the time. It, it's literally right. going to take an effort just to frame it up and hope yep. that it's going to come out right. Yep. Kind of and particularly <laughs> at night, with film that no one else is using, I had no idea what to advise her on settings. I had no idea how her film was going to come out. It right. might have come out blown out. It might have come out dark. I had no right. idea. Mm -hmm. And she had no way of telling me how it was going to look, and no one there was shooting film except for her, so no one even had a frame of reference you know, that we and, could offer. And she's right. She was right with her assessment or what have you. I give you that, but at mm. the same time, hey, this technology, shit, use it. Yeah. Now the other side of the coin is that she did make a, a comment that again abrasive, but it did get me thinking. And the simple fact of the matter is, is that I will go out on a day and I'll shoot 300, 400 photos. And I won't think twice about it. Mm -hmm. And then I go back and 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 tweak, uh, find the ones that are good, tweak the ones that are good, and then dump the rest or sit on them or whatever. Yeah. And she makes every single shot count. Because she has to. Because she has to. And has it's to. that kind of mindset that got me thinking. Try to make every shot count. The other side of that, though is do you not take a shot because you're afraid it's not going to come out well and you never grow and learn? And that's what I've said multiple times, that a digital camera is what made me a decent photographer because I had the feedback mm -hmm. virtually instantly 
as to how the, as to how I was doing. Mr. King, what were you, what were you going to say? I was saying uh, right now, especially with when you're talking about smartphones and uh, all these all the selfies and stuff like that. Well, this last week, uh, one of our stations used all the pictures that was taken from these cameras to tell a story of what you know what happened to their nice. area. And I mean, they stitched it all together. And they, if you uh, take time, you can make uh, these things actually tell a story instead of just take your picture of food uh, or your selfies and stuff like that. You can tell a story. Yeah. And some of these areas, no one knew that was going on until they, these pictures came out. And then, in fact, the, the station sent reporters out there because they were getting these pictures coming from this one apartment complex that was a. Uh, off the Greens uh, Greens Road area, and they all these stories that they were telling with these pictures brought the ca the crews out there, and then they got going, which got the city to finally send somebody. But you know you can use it to tell you know for serious stuff to tell stories of of what's in your area, and if it and these were some very these are amateurs and they were some very good pictures. And and again I I I, I want to repeat what I said last week. I have nothing against those that take selfies and whatnot. It's just not my personality, so I won't necessarily do it. I have nothing against people that take Greedy. <laughs> well played in that. But, I mean, I, I, I have my own preference when it comes to me snapping the shutter, you know, pushing the shutter on my camera um, versus what other people like. And it is what it is, you know, but what what does bother me from an artistic standpoint is, and I'm just going to speak from my own examples, okay? I could take a shot that I shot with my Nexus 6 or what have you, and I put some time in it. I mean, just just thought about it, planned it out, lined it up, shot it, got it on, got it on the computer, did my editing, and make sure to look just right, upload it, boom. Beautiful, well-thought-out image. But yet... I go out there and take a picture of my dirty ass car and that thing will just get so much more run far as the engagement between people that are looking at the, 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 the photographs, you know. One is clearly a snapshot, one is clearly a composition, if you will, and it just amazes me how, how people oh. just react to react a certain way to certain types of uh, photographs. And if uh -huh. you look through the online, uh, uh, the social media accounts from different people and what they're sharing and look at the stuff that they're getting the most engagement on, it's just the sort of the so, off-the-wall stuff, you know? Think about uh -huh. it this way. There's art galleries, and then there's your photo album or your Polaroids. I know we're all old enough to remember Polaroids. Yeah, no uh, doubt. Camera at the party. No doubt. Yeah, I've got three <laughs> Polaroid bill. Instagram and Snapchat are Polaroid. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. They are. And to a so, large extent, your Facebook wall. Yeah, I'm not really over there. Um, yeah, sure. Right. Like, so my son took graduation photos. Some of okay. them are absolutely hilarious. He wanted to share a bunch of them on Facebook. I want to print them out in an album. Something I can keep that I don't have to worry about some service disappearing and deleting my photos because that happened with all of my daughter's baby photos. I thought digital is great. It's going to be around forever. The service is closed down. I didn't mm. have friends. Oh, that's unfortunate. So it, yeah. Kodak, Shutterstock, like if you don't keep paying, so I'm just like certain things you have to print out still. Hard copy is still the best. Cough, yes. carbonite, cough. <clears throat> yeah, I, I use Backblaze. But I still want that Crash physical plane. album. Right. Because then somebody comes over, I can pull it out. I don't have to get on my computer and stop interacting with somebody. Yeah. Pictures of my kids. Yeah, I get that. And and there's there's serious value in that. It is. There's so, some things, you know, and, and I said it in that video this week that just the feeling that I got from sitting at the time, sitting on the floor at my mom's house and flipping through the photo album, the same photo album that I, you know, I, I, that I had seen for many years, just just what it made me feel. And then I go down there today, you know, 
umpteen hundred years later and go and grab that same photo album and sit on the floor or on the couch. And it's just a warm feeling that I, I, I really can't explain it, but it's just yeah. that emotion of holding those physical photographs. And I know that back then they didn't have a choice but to have them printed out, you know, but right. there's, there's, but there's a certain value on that. Even down to today mm -hmm. when, you know, Mr. Sweeney introduced me in particular to freeprints.com and their service. Me too. And, I've printed some out from that, and my son, my, my youngest, who's been shooting a lot, he's been doing that. And, and to see he's got a collage just full of things that he's really, really proud of and that he can tangibly, you know, yeah. share with people, you know. And this is, it is, there is a value in printing photographs, you know. Yeah. I'm not going to print all of my photographs, but some of them. You know, what I do, especially if I go out on, um, when I do uh, rail pictures, some of my really good ones I want that I really I want to keep, I will come come home and I will print get the small that's about the same you know about the size of a you know your regular uh, pictures that you would get uh, yep. card, print it out, put it in my uh, photo album, and I always have those. And then the ones that are okay, that, you know, still good, but they are not what I really wanted to really sh you know show off. I'll put on, I'll keep on my. Uh, I'll keep them iPhotos or something like that, or I'll throw them up to uh, Flickr. Yeah. And but always there, I always keep a backup of everything. But um, the stuff that I want to really show off, like you, I would get the photo album out, and you can start going through all of that. I'll print them out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I've been really enjoying over on uh, on Facebook. Sorry, not Google Plus. There's this thing going around called <coughs> Mac Thursday. Uh, which is every Thursday you post a picture. Oh shoot, I haven't done mine today. Um, from your past, and I have been trying to do it for the same date in some day in the past. Okay. And that, that fun. yeah, and that has proven to be extremely interesting because it's given me kind of a um, a little insight into my own life and my own little personal history, as it were. Um, some good, some bad. Um, and it definitely has shown how I've grown as a photographer because some of the stuff I shot was crap. Um, but others are good and, and whatnot. And one of the other things that um, has come out of Facebook for me um, is an interest in other forms of photography. There's a black and white photography group uh, specifically for railroads, which is my primary photographic interest. And yep. there's an abstract one um, as well. And that's really got me thinking about different angles and different things that I can do and different lighting techniques and whatnot. And it's, I, I think the more you expose yourself to good or interesting or different or inspirational, pick a word, uh, photography, the more you try to grow as a photographer and develop your own style and develop your own interests. That sounds reasonable. And I also wanted to show you one of the shots that, sorry, not a smartphone, didn't have one at the time, um, kind of got a lot of interesting comments on the abstract photo group um, on Facebook. And this is, the, I posted it with, well, how's this for abstract? And one guy came back and said, that's not abstract at all. And, looks and like I'm going, ghost train. Yeah, and I'm going, uh, how is that not abstract? I've been doing this for 14 years, bud. This is the only shot I've got like this. Trust me. Uh, this yeah, is pretty freaking cool. abstract. Pretty cool. Like yeah. you said, it looks like a ghost train. Well, yeah. yeah I and, love that. And the, the technical details here, by the way, just for anybody that cares, um, w how we did this was we opened up the shutters of the cameras. It was me and two other guys. We were all bouncing ideas off of each other. And we opened up the shutter before the train arrived, ran the shutter uh, open until it started to get to just left of the center of the frame and then closed it. But in between, when the locomotive passed us, we popped one very bright electronic flash Freeze onto the time. locomotive. And it gives this translucent effect. Yep. Free stuff in time when you got long exposures. Good trick. It's a good picture. Well, thank good you. Stuff. 
I like to think of it as one of my better ones. Well, before we get out of here, I thought I'd bring up one more thing. Um, I can't speak for you folks, but if someone wants to buy my photography, I'm going to let them buy it. Okay. Oh, heck yeah. You know, I'm going to mm -hmm. let them buy it. And so since I've sort of tried to build a little name for myself, if you will, you know, I, I, I'm fairly careful about what I put online and, and, and where I put it online, if you will. But what, what would you do if someone took one of your photographs from social media or what have you and decided to try to sell it as theirs? You know, what would you guys do? Find out where they live and get Michael King to shoot them. <laughs> I'll find out where they live and get my lawyer to go after them. Well, I'd just... be pissed, but since I, most of my stuff isn't copyrighted, I'd, I'd probably... Oh, that's not true. At, well, like, I don't watermark, watermark my stuff. It's okay, just but, but minute, that's been tested in court. Because you took it, it has an implied copyright without yeah. you having to watermark it or state that the copyright is there. It, under U.S. law, there is a copyright, okay. whether you choose to mark it as such or not. But if you are truly concerned about it, you should only post low-resolution images, and they should be watermarked. Yeah. I um, what, Here recently, uh, over on Petapixel, there was a photographer that took an amazing photograph of the beach surf that was submitted for some contest or what have you, and the people in the contest shared the photo and gave him his credit for it and said, hey, check out this shot that was submitted for this, you know, certain, certain focus contest that we have. And it went wild. You know, a lot of people saw it, and, and it was a nice, well-deserved props uh, photo. Mm -hmm. thing is, some viewer saw that same photo and decided to download it themselves and <laughs> and post it in their own little gallery as if they owned said photograph. Um, mm -hmm. So when they find out that um, that they could put this thing out there and they watermarked it themselves and whatnot and had people bidding for the photographs. I'm sharing my screen now. This is the actual shot that's mm -hmm. that was in question. And the guy had bids for it and said he was going to sell it for X amount of dollars when people ask about it. So the photographer that took the original shot found this out there, approached the seller, if you will, about his shot, and he didn't really <clears throat> he didn't really just uh, go off on him or anything. He just sort of went along with it as if he was a a buying customer. You know, he didn't freak out. He didn't get rude or. or cease and desist, but he went all the way through with the transaction up until it was time to transfer the monies, okay? And so when it was time to transfer the monies, the seller saw the guy's name, the guy's name that was associated with the paying account was the same person that he ripped off and took him down immediately and was never heard from again, you know? And this shows just a little bit of the conversation there. You know, this guy was going to charge him 30 bucks plus $15 postage and handling, yada, yada, yada. I mean, this dude was going to make money off of him, and it wasn't even his shot, man. But I thought that was pretty pretty sad, number one, for somebody to do that, but it's a real deal for mm. artists that are out there um, trying to pay the bills with, with, with their art. I'm not one of those people, you know. I, I am blessed to have a, a decent nine to five job that pays my bills and if I'm lucky I can snap a shot and people will like it and they will buy it from me. Even with that said, I don't want anybody taking any of my hobby stuff and trying to profit off of it without me knowing about it or without me getting a piece of the pie as a royalty or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the difference that some people don't quite get is when you use a lot of these free services, you're signing away certain rights to your to your not only your privacy but to the things that you post out there, such as photographs. And most of these user agreements say, "Hey, we can take said images that you shared and manipulate that image to our liking, so we can use it as advertising." You know, and Facebook. You know, and and that's the price you pay for a free 
service, you know. So I can't. I, I don't know about you guys, but I tend to try to at least put um, a little watermark on my shots. And if it's something that I know that could really be looked at as like a stock photograph or whatever, I make that watermark really, really obvious and try to put it somewhere to where if they even try to crop it, it's just going to screw up the shot kind of mm -hmm. thing. You know, um, what are your thoughts on that? You got any thoughts on that, Annette? This whole story? Um, I would probably do what the artist did and be like, hey, and just shock the guy with, you took my photo, claimed it as your own, and I'm trying to get it. Especially since he can't print it out at the resolution, the full size resolution. Right. Yeah. Dead giveaway right there. Well, dang, man. I only got it at 300 by 200. Really? Yeah. You trying to sell me a little tiny picture for thirty bucks? <laughs> Here's a postage stamp for thirty dollars. Right? <laughs> oh gosh, I thought that was hilarious, but it's it's just hey, people are snakes and they're gonna try anything. What are you, what are your thoughts, Mr. Kelly? Well, again, I do watermark um, most of the shots that I post, um, and I also reduce the size and yeah. make sure that the postable shot is so small that its commercial value would be virtually nil. Um, and that's basically what I do. On the other hand, I have to admit, it got really... Well, for a lack of a better term, it got real, current buzzword, when several years ago... A a guy that a friend knew handed him a disc of railroad pictures, and um, handed him this. Said, "Hey, here here's a whole bunch of my my railroad photos." And he I, he pops the disc in the disc player and asks me to play him on the TV. And I'm going, "Gee, some of these look awful familiar." Oh, and no. then next one over, bam. Not only was it my shot, but it was watermarked, and it had my website address. Oh, man. So I'm going, all right, well, then, um, this is why I reduced the quality of my stuff. <laughs> because all he had done was right-click, saved as, stuck it and stuff it in a folder, and then threw it on a disk and burned it. Indeed. That's so sad, uh -huh. man. Mr. Mr. King, what about you? Any opinions on this? I, well, on this. The free stuff, like uh, even on even on uh, Flickr, I do reduce. I don't really watermark, but I do reduce the resolution. Now we're on. Um, oh God, the other one that I use, Smug Mug. Now I put up full resolutions on those because there, one you got to pay to be on it. Two, everything's already 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 um, copyrighted to you, so you. No one can download it without your permission and uh, selling it like that. But uh, I will reduce the re resolution, and some of them I will watermark some way or another. But um, <clears throat> so I very rarely do I put up anything that's full resolution. Right. And also I do turn off download. Um, yeah. Some of these. Some of these that you're. Uh, they said, "You want to be let people download?" I said, "No, I turn that off." All right. Yeah, you have to you have to know what you're dealing with as far as the platforms, you know. And hopefully, people are going to watch this and sort of understand. You know, there are some risk out there that goes along with the potential rewards of being recognized. You know, so just 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 be careful, people. All right, I'm One going to what. One interesting side effect of that whole grabbing photos and not paying attention thing, um, I was going through a book. Um, it was actually it was forwarded to me um, somewhere. Somebody had found this in a in a, a book and taken a picture of it, um, a picture of a picture, and the caption was "Wonderful Harley Davidson motorcycle in uh, Germany or someplace." It was a Yamaha. Seriously, dude. Yeah, and I'm like. Wow. That's nice sad. research. That's so sad, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's 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 try to make, make this, this society a little bit better with how we handle our photography and, and and offering it up for people's enjoyment but protecting our protecting our work. You know what I'm saying? So spread the word on that. Spread the knowledge. All right. We're gonna get up out of here. Um 
just wanted to keep this somewhat short and sweet and use it as sort of a preview for next week. But before we go, as always, we're going to allow everyone in the, in the panel tonight to share uh, anything that they'd like to plug, let us know that we, where we can find them online and so forth, and, um, you know, and check out some of their other musings and work. So we will go Ladies First again up in Boston. Miss Annette, where do we find you and your work? Easiest place is AnnetteHolland.com, even though I haven't blogged since I moved. Um, but it's Whoops. got links. Man, between the accident and the move, I just haven't had it in me. But anyway, uh, it's got links to G+, my Instagram, my Twitter, uh, and LinkedIn. I think that covers everything. All right. It's usual good to see you, lady. Really enjoy having you on here. Next I up. needed this. <laughs> Next up, we'll go uh, down to Texas. Mr. Michael King, where do we find you and your work? I can be found on Google+, Plus, almost anywhere on the web. So that's my, either Michael King or Michael King 4023. And I can be found a lot in my office doing claims. Lord of mercy. And I got a ton of them. Well, it's good to see you, my man. Thank you for hanging out with us as always, brother. I needed I needed a distraction. This has just been one of these one of these historic hell of a week. And in the bad in a bad sense. All right now, Mr. Joey Kelly up in Maine, where do we find you and your musings? Well, my musings and random weirdness are usually found well, everywhere. Uh, but uh, you can start at Joey, J-O-E-Y, Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y dot com. Uh, from there, you can find links to my photography, my quotes, my various interests, my computer repair business, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, the ever limiting, ever limitless knowledge that is contained on my quotes page, such as, and this is a famous one, <clears throat> Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. Albert Einstein. Einstein. Mm, brilliant. Good stuff, mm -hmm. my man. Good seeing you as always, Mr. Kelly. All right. Lastly, myself. Find me here on Google Plus under the handle Ant Pruitt, or just go to antpruitt.com like these fine folks in here have their domain set up to funnel all kinds of content to you. Uh, you can also take a look at the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash antpruitt, where you'll find these videos and other little mindless stuff that I have put together because I have no life. And if you're on the Twitterverse, be sure to check out ant underscore pruitt on Twitter and um, follow my mindless chatter over there. <laughs> Thanks for watching this uh, here in the Smartphone Photographers community. Be sure to check out smartphone-photographers.com. And uh, if you're interested in joining this particular community, feel free to hit myself up or any of these folks here tonight uh, to request an invite. Number one, you have to be on Google Plus and active, okay? Actively using Google Plus. But you also have to fit in with the community. It's not about just spamming and sharing all of your random photos. We like to get some type of, you know, knowledge sharing out of this and get some tips and tricks to help make not only yourself a better smartphone photographer, but the rest of the community members better, you know, because I don't know about y'all, but I can use the work, you know. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you folks next Thursday at about 9 p.m. Eastern time. And um, yeah, we'll see you then. Peace.